Shalom to you and welcome. In this video, we're going to explore limits graphically and numerically to identify when limit exists and when it does not. And if it does exist, what is it? Again, we review a limit as a value that a number, a function approaches as x value the input approaches an x value okay, as we exemplified with polygons okay so as the number of polygons increases to infinity that the area of the polygon approaches the area of a circle okay, so the area of a circle will be the limit of the area of the polygon so if we are given function like this how we can use Able to find out whether or not the limit exists and what is it if it does exist before we do that we want us to look at when limits does not exist okay in your book here <clears throat> so one of the reason one of the uh there are three different cases when limits does not exist one of them is when uh, i think they have them summarized in your book here that's on page 50. So the common types of behavior associated with non-existence of a limit. If f of x, which is any function, approaches a different number from the right side of c, then it approaches it from the left side. So c, it will be the x value it is approaching. So if, if the left side is not the same as the right side, okay, and what does that mean? Look at here. Have this function graph the same function f of x what is the approaches at at this as, as x approaches zero as it approaches zero this function f of y is down here because it's negative one and from the right coming from the right it is one coming from the left it is negative one coming from the right it is one so one and negative one are not the same so if it happens, then the function, the limit does not exist as at x equals 0. At x approaches 0, the limit does not exist. It may exist other places, but at x equals 0, it does not exist. Okay? Then, <clears throat> second one is, if, if f of x increases or decreases without bound as x approaches c. So if it keeps um like going to infinity has no end and we see an example like here the graph one like here okay so as f of x approaches zero as f of effect approaches zero again approaches zero here from the left see the graph going up the graph is going up it doesn't seem to end from the right is going up so we can't really tell what value of y it is uh, the function is approaching it just keeps going without bound so the fun limit does not exist as x approaches zero right. the third one is the third one is when f of x oscillates between two fixed values okay Oscillation looks like this. It look like this. So you kind of go up and down, up and down, kind of back and forth. Okay, at the different most of the time sine function does that. So or another one is this one they do here. See that sign because of the the, the range of one and negative one it keeps going up. Once it gets here, it keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So at zero or as x approaches zero. The limit does not exist because of this oscillation. So those are the three places that x uh, limit does not exist. So then when it does exist, what is it? And how do we find it? So let's, uh, you need your graphing calculator. We're going to use our graphing calculator to make the work easier. Instead of plugging each of these numbers and then finding these values, we're going to use our graphing calculator to make it easier. So... <clears throat> So we're going to plot in this function, okay? So 
So if you go to, we're going to play. If you go to the Y, press the Y, they bring out the. Okay. And by the way, make sure your it is in radian mode. If it is not in radian mode, just go to mode. Okay. Press mode, and then you use the arrow key and come down and select radian and click. Make sure it's highlighting like that, and then go back to Y. Now, if you have any of these plots selected, like this plot one is selected, this is showing me that I had something in the statistics table. So you want to um, deselect it, otherwise it's going to affect our graphics. So what we do, we use the arrow key, press the arrow key to go, see it highlighting, just click enter. If you click enter, it will be deselected. So and then you use your arrow key and come down again. See, it is deselected now. Okay, now you are ready to go. So use your use parentheses to put the top, and then use parentheses to put the bottom. So they stay together. Okay. So and use this for your x, the x value here. So you go x. Okay, and then. Oops, I need to clear. Need parentheses first. Parentheses, okay. And then x, x minus. I'm sure I use the minus key. This is the minus key and the negative key. So don't misuse them. Okay. Minus 2. And then close the parentheses and then divide it by parentheses again. And then we put x squared. x. Now there are two ways you can do square. You can do this ar arrow and two. Okay. Just arrow and two like that. But you see this highlight me is still in the exponent. So you need this arrow key to bring it down. Okay. You see that to normal before you type the next thing. So it's okay. minus x. Okay, and then minus 2. Close the parenthesis. Okay. And then we go to... Now, from here, from the table here, we want to find the value of... We start from 1.9. So, go to table set. See the table set in blue? So, it's second window. So, it's second window. It gives you the table set. We want our table to start from... 1.19 so type 1.1.9 and then we want it to go by because the largest number decimal here has go by 3 so we want to we can do it 0 0.00001 that's fine because we have 0 0.001 there okay otherwise if it if it's not set then then after that you go to table we want to look at table table is up here so you do second table and that will bring out the table Then you're going to go scroll down so we have 1.9 so the, the, the thing value there is 0 0.3448 so write that down and then the same way you find 1.99 so you keep use your arrow key okay use our arrow key and scroll down Okay, and to find all the values, okay, until we find all of them. So I scroll down and fill this in with the numbers they give because there's a lot, you know. So, um, so but our attention is where 2 is. Okay, where 2 is. So, you see at 2, there is error, which means 2 is not in the domain of this function. Because if you set the denominator equal to zero and solve it, two will be a zero there. So that's why it's not defined. But again, we are not interested in on whether or not it is defined as two. We are just interested in knowing what this what y value is approaching as x approaches two from the left. So coming from the left, x is up y as x is approaches two from the left, y seems to be approaching 0 0.333. It has three three. 3, 4 here, but on from the right side, the last digit we have on the right side was 3332. Three, three, so they are different in this last one. 
so this seems to be the dominant so which you know will be about one third okay so which will be our one so the limit of this function is equal to one third so the function is approaching one third as x approaches two okay the function is approaching one third as x approaches two so one third is the limit of that function it does exist okay let's look at another one and let's look at number this one number five so uh for those of you who have i'm gonna clear this who have a calculator like mine you know check to see if your calculator can input fractions so we can actually input fractions without parentheses so like if you go to alpha for mine if you click alpha f1 so it's going to be alpha that so it's going to give us option four number one click enter it gives us fraction so we can type it direct so if we do second square root okay, we put the square root there so we type in x so x plus three x plus three now it this is blinking still inside the square root so you need to use arrow key to get away from that square root before you put minus okay and then put the square root again or you put the square root of three okay and then use arrow key again to get away from that okay and then you come down you type in x and that's the function use arrow key to just get out of mm -hmm. uh, we are looking for where it approaches zero so go to table set again it's second table set so now we want it to our table to start at negative 0 0.1 so it's negative 0 0.1 and then we are going to go by okay, 0, 0, 001 so that's good 0, 0, 001 so hit enter uh, i mean go to table second table okay so we do second table and then we do the same thing we inspect our values to get to where we have you know in the middle all right again here is the we are at zero the function is undefined of course because x cannot be zero but then looking at the from the left coming down what is it approaching came down here 0 0.2887 okay the same here 0 0.2887 so it looks like it's approaching 0 0.2887 because once it gets to that value it's approaching it just keeps repeating it won't stop so the value exists the limit exists and it's 0 0.2887 and this does not repeat because if it does repeat then it will be rounded on so you just keep it like that maybe it's a square root so 0 0.228 okay how about graphically okay let's look at number 11 here so again just you don't need to plug this into the graph there is already graphed for you so once you look at the graph you focus on you are looking at the limit as it approaches three so we look at three what is what is this function doing as it approaches three from left I think y is approaching one coming from the right is approaching one also so the limit is one so how about 13 hold on okay okay so how about this one when as limit approaches two at two see this function looks like it's not defined at two but that's not our business so what we look at coming from the left going to two what is it doing it's going to two coming from the right it's also going to two so the limit for this function is two because as x approaches two from the right left and right y approaches two as well so how about here <coughs> 15 as x approaches 5 okay let's see 5 is right here so as x approaches 5 from the left y seems to be approaching 1 it's just 1 negative 1 i mean down here and from right it's approaching positive 1 so right and left are approaching different 
y value so it does not exist limit does not exist here how about this one as x approaches pi pi one half pi so one half pi is right here so we see one is going down it's going down infinitely how about coming from the right approaches pi two is going up infinitely without bound so it's not touching it so we can tell it does not exist limit does not exist at pi at one half pi here how about 19 again we notice this as this approaches zero at zero it oscillates as it approaches zero so it oscillates be between one and negative one keep going back and forth so limit does not exist as well here okay hope that helps